All right, so the FAA remote ID rule became effective in March of 2024. And leading up to that date, it was pretty difficult to actually find remote ID modules. There just weren't that many options and they were really expensive. And for those that don't know, these modules are for drones that don't broadcast a remote ID natively. I have some older drones that don't have it, so to fly those, I need a remote ID module. Most of the newer drones being released, even those in the budget category, have it built in. But there's still some that don't. When we get outside, I'm actually going to be mounting this uh, module to the Potensic Atom. This is the three axis version. And um, this one is sub 249 grams. So technically, if you're flying it recreationally, it does not require remote ID. Um, but this is the one I'm going to be using to demonstrate um, the RID module here because it does not have it built in. Prices have dropped significantly and these things are much more accessible now. And this one is by a company called Ruko, as you can see, plastered across the front there. Um, they also produce drones. I've reviewed a couple of them on the channel here, but this is the Ruko R111S. That's the Ruko R111S and it's selling on Amazon for $39.99. And these things were going for over $300 a couple of years ago. So you can see how small the module is. Let me give you a sense of scale here. Here is a quarter. So you can see that. And let me show you, I've got a thumb drive over here as well. So you can kind of see <laughs> how small this thing is. There's an SD card. So yeah, it's also super lightweight. 14 grams, y'all. That's nothing. Okay, quick look at the device itself here. So um, you can see on the left, we have the power button. And then to the right of that is the setting button. This is basically the button used to pair the uh, device here to the app and the app is called Ruko Scanner. And on this side, you have the USB-C charging port. Here's the remote ID serial number. And then you have the three LED indicator lights here. Oh, it also has a buzzer. So you can see this little speaker here. Um, but yeah, it has a buzzer alarm on it so you can locate your drone. And we'll test it out to see how loud it is when we get outside. Okay, so it comes with two pieces of 3M Velcro for mounting the module to your drone. You've got two pieces of double-sided tape, USB-C uh, charger, zip ties here. Got a couple versions of zip ties and an instructions manual. Okay, now we're gonna walk through setting up the device in real time. I have not done this yet, so we're doing it for the first time together. So let's get into the Ruko Scanner app and let's power on the module. Okay, so we've got power now and now we are going to press and hold the setting button to start the pairing process and you can see it has recognized the device. We're gonna tap on that. Connection successful. Now, you are going to need to register the device with the FAA on the Drone Zone website and there's actually instructions in the manual on how to do that. And I'll put those here so you can freeze frame, freeze frame that if you need to. Freeze frame that, that'll walk you through how to do that because you're gonna need to enter um, a registration number. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, it's also asking for an operator ID. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that blank. Doesn't look like it's required, so I'm not gonna worry about that at this point. We're gonna hit save. And we have to restart the module for this to be finalized. So we're going to power down and let's power it back on. OK, guys, I powered the module back on and you can see what the LEDs are doing there. The lights are cycling, um, but I do believe we are connected. And the reason why I think that is when we go in here and we click here, whoops, we can actually turn on the buzzer and you can kind of hear how loud that is. 
I guess it's kind of loud. If it's quiet enough and you're walking through the woods, you could probably pick up on that. All right, so let's get outside, mount it to the Potensic Atom, get it in the air and test this thing out. All right, I went ahead and mounted it right in the middle here of the drone. Um, because it's so light, I don't think it's going to affect the center of gravity much. My only concern would be the placement of the compass and the, you know, the internal components, the GPS and all of that. Um, you know, hopefully it won't it won't have any in interference with the internal components at all. Okay, guys, so we're out here with the um, the Potensic Atom. I've got the uh, Ruko Remote ID module all powered up and connected. It's ready to go. Okay, let me show you the setup here. So there is the Atom with the Ruko Remote ID module mounted to the top there and we're ready to go. So um, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and do a compass calibration, probably leave it at low altitude for a minute or so, just to make sure everything is copacetic before I take it up. All right, thanks for sticking with me, you guys. Oh, and by the way, I don't think I ever mentioned, this is the Gadget Inspector channel. I don't believe I've mentioned it at all. I think I jumped right into the video. But um, welcome, I'm glad you're here. We're into drones, all kinds of drones, all kinds of gadgets. You'll, you'll see all kinds of gadgets on this channel. I appreciate you for being here. Like, subscribe, share the video with anyone you think might um, find this useful. And that's my spiel. Let's keep going, guys. Come on. All right, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and get the atom in the air here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and let's just take it up in the air and park it right about there, okay? And then let's go over to the app now. Let's see what's happening in the app. That's that's what, what this is all about, right? Let's see. So let's see what kind of data. This is supposed to be a map. Let's see if we can find ourselves. There we are. Okay, so it looks like the blue icon that's us that's where i'm standing and the red flag is the drone i would imagine let's test that theory so i'm gonna go ahead and just fly it over there a little ways and that red flag should move i would imagine yes it did okay very good now, I'm not sure what the range of this thing is. Um, I would imagine it's connected via Bluetooth. So I wouldn't think it would be very, very far. Now, with that in mind, I will be doing a video really soon on a device called the Drone Tag Rider, which does have a wider radius in terms of um, um, what signals, uh, remote ID signals it can pick up. Um, but again, I'm, I'm going down another rabbit trail there. Back to this video. Let's click on this here and see what kind of information it's giving us. So let's see, status is airborne, distance from me is 355 feet. It's giving us the height, 26 feet. Let's see, let's compare that to the app. The app says, the Potensic Pro app says 23 feet. That's pretty good. Now, there is going to be a little bit of margin of, you know, of error. Um, I didn't look for it in the, in the manual, but there might be something in the manual that tells exactly what that is. Um, but within three feet is pretty darn good. Um, distance wise, it's off quite a bit. The app is saying distance of 104 feet, um, but I don't know. The, I launched a drone from right over there, which isn't that far away. So that's that's off by quite a bit. Not sure what's going on there. You can see it gives the location. Um, what else is it giving us? It gives vertical speed. So let's test that. I'm going to throttle up and let's see. Yep, it's giving us vertical speed. Wow. Okay. Excellent. Let's bring it down. Okay. Let's see. Uh, oh, okay. Here we go. It's giving us the accuracy numbers. Horizontal accuracy less than 98 feet. Okay. So it's it's giving us that margin 
the margin for error. Let's see. Uh, oh, there's an operator ID. Um, okay. So that's the kind of information that it's giving us here in the app. Um, but the bottom line here is this module is broadcasting a remote identification which allows you to be in compliance with the remote ID rule. That's what you want. Um, I don't really think it matters how far this app will pick up the um, signal, but just for kicks, let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and see. And we'll fly the atom out a little ways as well. We'll take it up about 120 feet or so, or 150. And let's push out. And so far, looks like uh, it's still tracking it. We're out there about 500 feet. Let's click in here and see what we've got. Distance from me, 612 feet. Okay, it's a little bit closer. Yeah, so within that 98 feet, wow, it's 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 got a little bit of a, um, a error rate here. But um, 612, it's off by about 100 feet in terms of distance. Uh, height, height is almost spot on. 154 or 155 in the uh, Rugo scanner app and 159 in the um, Potensic Pro um, live feed. Okay, pretty good. Okay, so it's still still picking it up after 500 feet. Let's go out a little further. Why not? Let's just see. Can't hurt. Still picking it up. <laughs> we'll go out about a thousand and then check it again. Okay, we're out there about a thousand feet now. And yeah, it's still picking it up. So distance, 1096. In the, in the Potency Pro app, it says 1056. So it's actually getting more accurate the further out we go. Height 159 in the Ruko app, 162 on the live feed. So pretty darn accurate, you guys. And so with the Ruko app, I'm thinking it's going to pick up any remote ID signal, okay? Um, and based on our test here, it will do that within at least a thousand feet. I'm not going to go out any further than that just so I can maintain my. Um, visual line of sight um, but let's do this I'm going to get out of this app let's open up the drone scanner app okay let's open up the drone scanner app and let's see if it's picking it up yes it is check that out so let's click on it let's see wow that's pretty good guys there it is it's telling us the manufacturer and model so all the information that gets that you entered there when you when you register uh, or when you set up the, um, the the module, that's what it's broadcasting. So it's broadcasting the serial number, manufacturer, model, um, the registration ID. You see all this information. That's looks like the drone scanner app is outputting a lot more information there's our location latitude longitude altitude 154 there versus 162 pretty close altitude 20 uh altitude pressure okay I'm, I'm i'm not sure exactly what i'm reading here but let's see um and then it gives you sort of the error rate there as well Altitude 151 versus 162 on the feed. At least I think that's what I'm seeing. Um, height 48. Okay, this is giving me meters. 48 meters. Um, which, yeah, it's about 150-ish, somewhere in there. It's not giving me distance. Oh, yes, it is. 0 0.336 
kilometers versus 1056 um, 1, feet I'll see if I can convert that and put that up on, put put what put what that translates to up on the screen so we can have apples to apples comparison but very cool okay uh, it's even showing us when it was first seen and last seen and we can see here the location of our location looks like that green flag may be where we took off from and the red is where the drone is now so let's uh, let's bring it back it's just been hovering out there and let's fly it on back here let's see let's see what that red flag does as we fly back So really the whole point of all this is just to demonstrate that the module is broadcasting a remote ID. Okay, and um, whatever devices are out there that are meant to pick up that signal should pick up that signal. Yep, there it is. It even gives us a trail, as you can see, a trail of where the drone has come from. Very nice. Okay. Well, I'm not sure there's much else to uh, to talk about with this thing. We've talked about how to set it up, um, and we took a look at um, whether it is actually emitting or broadcasting a signal, which it is. Um, let's do one other thing. I did want to test the buzzer. So let's go ahead and land it. All right, let's land it. And let's go back to the Ruko scanner app. And we're gonna go back in here and we're going to turn on the beeper or buzzer. Oops, there it goes. And let's just see how loud that is. Decent loudness, actually. I think if you're searching for it, you're walking around in the woods or, you know, in a field somewhere, you would hear that. Okay, guys, that is it for me. I think we did the darn thing. Um, if there's something that you wanted to see that I didn't think of to show you, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll come back out here and see if I can get that done for you. But I think uh, I think we, you know, accomplished the goal here just to make sure this thing actually does what it's advertised to do. And it appears to do just that. All right. As always, be good to somebody. Be good to yourself. See you next time, y'all. Later.